All right. Okay. I usually have somebody to help me doing live, but I'm doing it all by myself today. So uh, it, it probably won't look as professional as it usually does. But hey, we're trying. We're trying. So, uh, good evening. This is Phil from PDQ Merchant. Oh, I don't know how to do that. Hold on. And the ATM Mastermind Group page. And, um, and I think, I don't know. Hopefully they can hear me on Instagram. If you can hear me on Instagram, give me a thumbs up or something. I don't know. I think you can. Uh, um, anyways, as Phil from PDQ Merch Enterprises and the ATM Mastermind Group page, and we go live every other Monday at 6 Central Time. We go live on YouTube, um, Instagram, and LinkedIn, also Facebook. So um, uh, tonight we're going live and... Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to we have a topic that we talk about, and then if you guys got questions, then please uh, put questions in the chat, and then I'll try to answer the questions the best I can. We talk usually about fifteen to half an hour, depending on how long the conversation goes. Um, so it should be a good time, um, and hopefully uh, everybody uh, enjoys the conversation. All right. So uh, my name is Phil from PDQ Merch Enterprises. We've been in ATM business for little over 24 years, started right in the beginning, started at ATMs. Um, and then I taught other people throughout the years how to get into ATM business. And uh, they've been successful also. Um, I'm a registered ISO with Pueblo Bank and Trust. Um, th that's our sponsor bank. And that means that we can buy uh, the processing from Visa MasterCard. There's also 16 other banks that we buy processing for so that we are enabled to um, process each transaction. Um, depending on, if you look on the back of your card, you'll see an emblem, either maybe Visa, MasterCard, Nice Sears, Pulse. It'll have a bank on the back of your debit card. And that's one of the networks that we, um, that we buy every year. And then we are able to process transactions. We also sell equipment. Uh, we also sell parts. And if you need repairs of anything and anything, we also offer repair service. We have a course um, that's four ninety five to. Uh, so if you want to get an ATM business, it'll teach you everything from A to Z how to get into the ATM business. All right, so here we go. Uh, today's topic is going to be understand the cost of keeping your ATM working and looking good. Learn how to run your ATM business well and save money and keep happy customers and keep your ATMs safe. All right, so um, cost of keeping your ATM running. There is, what I'd like to do is when I first started in, I would put in on the side, uh, when my mom used to do, she, you know, back in the day, she would always save a little bit every week and put it in an envelope. Um, and then that way she saved for, uh, she saved for a Christmas fund and she saved for whatever she saved for our birthday party. She saved for my dad's birth birthday whatever. She always had a bunch of envelopes in her purse that she carried around. I don't know why she kept it in her purse, but she always did. And she, um, I thought, well, what, what if she got her purse stolen? I don't know, but, but she always guessed where she kept it. So she would put in a little every week to in case to save for this, um, for this event. Now that's the same thing that I would recommend you guys do. And what we're looking to do is really save. It's not a whole lot, but I would save about $200 a year for repairs. Most of the time you buy a brand new ATM, you won't need that $200. But now, at, at you get into, if you have a brand new ATM, you get into year three, four, five. Now you got $600, $800, $1,000. That would be saved for um, repairs on the ATM. Well, what are some of those repairs, you ask? Mm -hmm. Well, um, the repairs uh, that, that are going to be for your ATM are going to be... Um, Keypad replacement, keypad repair, a Spencer uh, repair, a card reader um, uh, repair, or it's actually not going to be repair. It's going to be replacement. So a card reader is going to run you between two hundred and three hundred dollars, depending on uh, where you can find it. We sell we sell card reader um, depending on where you're going to find them uh, and what model you're looking for. Uh, that's usually what it's going to be. You can't really re repair 
the, the the card dispenser. Usually, what happens is um, most of the time, if you get a card, you like we got a call this weekend. I called up and said, "Hey, uh, ATM doesn't work. The card reader doesn't work." So we went down location, <clears throat> and while it was is that it was in a laundromat. Um, the kids in a laundromat. It happens from time to time. They throw pennies and quarters into the dispenser or into um, the card reader. And then it, it blocks up. So I put my card in and it will only go halfway. I knew right away there was pennies and nickels and things like that in there. Sometimes it's cardboard. Sometimes it's toothpicks. So we go there. We we take the card reader. Um, there's four screws that take the card reader out. There's usually um, a wire that has to be decoupled on there. And there's usually a ground that you have to take that out. You take all that out. You can take the whole card reader out. And then from there, usually a metal case that is on the card reader. You got to take that off and then you can dump the card reader out and you can get um, you can get all the nickels or quarters or whatever is in there. You can get it out. Sometimes it's a little harder because there's got toothpicks in it or paper in there. So you're going to you might have to jiggle it a little. Maybe you have to take a long nose pliers or a, or a real thin screwdriver to fish that out. Now, that works 95 percent of the time. But in the case that they put it in there and it shorted it out. Now the card reader won't work. The card reader has got to clamp down the card and then push it to EMV. Um, that stands for Euro MasterCard Visa. If that doesn't happen, it doesn't clamp, then what happens is the ATM will function as uh, we call swipe. Uh, and sometimes that'll cause what we, we say a fallback. Now, if it's got a fallback, now what happens is some processors uh, like switch, switch commerce is our processor. Um, there's CDS, there's P PAI is not a processor. They're an ISO, but their processor is FIS. They, uh, don't like high fallback rates because they get charged extra. We get charged extra. So what they do sometimes is they shut off the fallback and then you'll get a decline. So instead of it falling back from EMV to swipe, it'll, it'll just decline and you'll get high decline rates, but it's all because the card reader isn't working properly. So, um, but then you'll have to replace the card reader if that happens. And if that happens that you're looking at two to $300, again, it's not a big um, high stress item to replace it. Four screws um, takes the card reader out to uh, in, a, in a harness, and then you can replace that again. And there's a metal bracket. So not a big problem. That's probably the number one problem that's inexpensive with an ATM that will happen first uh, when your ATM starts to malfunction. That's the number one thing that'll happen just because of the coins um, that could happen. Or somebody's jerk, jerking out the card all the time. They put it in and they jerk it out. That that could happen. Now, the next thing that goes on the ATM um, will be the dispenser that will go um, just because maybe the, it depends on the volume. If you got a high track, high volume place. The belts are always running. That will probably need to be re rebuilt. And my guess is somewhere around the three year mark. So what does that mean? Dispensers are about $1,200. You do not need a spare or a, a new dispenser. All you have to do is rebuild that dispenser. We rebuild dispensers. Um, so, but you're going to need a spare. So how do you do that? It's always a good when you have my recommendation is you've got five ATMs. Make sure you have a spare ATM sitting in the wings because now you can what we call Frankenstein that ATM. You could Frankenstein the ATM. Your dispenser goes out. Let's say you were dealing with us. You could take that brand new dispenser, put it in that unit that the dispenser went down, take that old one, put it in a box, send it to us. We'll have it rebuilt. And then it'll um, it'll uh, we can send it back to you. And now you can put, you can either flip it back, which I would recommend you do, but that'll be up to you. I see this all the time. People don't do this, but I would take that dispenser, put it back in that unit that was older, take that brand new dispenser, put it into that brand new ATM. That'll, uh, that goes a long way because you want to keep the parts constant with the ATM. But I see it. I, I do see people like, ah, forget it. And then pretty soon they got a keypad from here and a dispenser from there. Um, and then that it, it it's sometimes it's a challenge when it comes to warranty. Now the show sung Gen Mega, they're around a two year warranty, not quite two years. It's usually from the manufacturer date. 
So Gen Mega, I think, is 18 months from the day you receive the ATM. And now it shows something that's two years from the manufacturer date. So it just depends on who you're using. Um, Triton and um, Paloon, I don't know what their warranty process is. Um, those are on new ATMs. I don't know on a used ATM. All right. So uh, you can, you can uh, I recommend, again, you have five ATMs. Please buy an extra one in case this will go a long way. And if you get all new product, look, when I first started out, I had all new product. I didn't have any spares, you know, what we call white knuckling it. I was white knuckling it every day and hoping that nothing went wrong on the keypad or uh, or dispenser. Um, we just didn't we just didn't think about that. But now that I've been in business for 24 years that, you know, we always keep an extra everything because of that. And most of the time we keep three or four extras just because I don't. ATM going down, and if it's down any any longer um, than a few hours is a problem for us in the business and uh, negatively reflects it on our company. So, but if you don't have parts, what are you going to do? That's a problem. We did pick up a location like two years ago in a summer. A guy, uh, we, I, a guy called me and said, "Hey, I got a location um, up here. It was up up in, up that was up north." And I said, well, what's the issue? I went in there and there's an ATM in there. And I said, hey, what's going on with that? You went to the guy who owns the place. What's going on here? Is that the guy put the ATM in there. It worked for a month. Didn't work anymore. He can't get it running. He can't get it fixed. So I called the service number on the ATM. And I said, hey, wh what's going on? Um, a guy told me you're trying to you know, sell a location. He's like, yeah. I said, well, what's the problem with your ATM? He's like, brand new ATM. I called. No, the show song. They give me the run around this. I said, I got parts if you want. He's like, nah, I'm just going to pull the ATM out. And I said, okay. So we end up um, taking over location from the guy. Um, all right. We got a question. Hey, Phil. Um, it's a, do you prefer knowledge show song, Gen Mega? Last time um, I was servicing an ATM, the tech told me Gen Megas were much easier. I, you know what? That's the age old question. Um, it's, you know what, it's on preference. It, it, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I can't, I can't tell you one is better than the other. We've been in a Nautilus Joseon camp from the beginning. I like Gen Mega. I think there's a phenomenal product, but we're like 95% Nautilus Joseon. So is Gen Mega the way to go? I, I can't honestly say one way or is better than the other. It's whatever camp you decide to go with. I'm sure you'll figure um, that's the camp you like. You know, it's, it's, I, I don't, I won't say uh, one is better than the other. I think Nautilus Shosung has, has got some added benefits and I think Gen Mega has got some added benefits. So it just depends on which way you go um, and in what, what, um, what camp you're in. Um, Nautilus Shosung on a, on a, on a, a Halo 2 versus a, excuse me, Halo 2 versus a Gen Mega 2500. I think Gen Mega has or uh, not a show has a wide, a bigger screen than Gen Mega, but then you throw an Onyx in. And I think they're comparable, but then Onyx is more money. So, you know, it's it's whatever you want to do. I think both companies do a phenomenal job. It's really wh what's the service like? If you if you call not a show, son, do they answer the phone? Will they help you? Will Gen Mega help you? Um, it, or if you get stuck, so uh, we support both both uh, manufacturers. We have parts for both manufacturers. I don't have a preference. Um, both guys are, are uh, both companies have been nothing but good to our company over the years. So for me to say one way or another, to be honest with you, I, I don't have a preference. Um, I can tell you we use Knowledge Show Song more, but Gen Mega guys are are pretty phenomenal, to be honest with you. So I'm, I'm, I like them both. So it's over whatever camp you want to try out. I would suggest you try both and then see which one you like and then go that way. So um, let's see. I'm 27 ATMs deep in the Nada Show Sun. All right. Okay. So you're already in, you're already in, you're in a camp already. So um congratulations. Um all right, any other questions? No. Okay. So uh okay, so that's what we got in dispensers. Uh oh, thanks for all the information you share, Phil. You're helping me so much. And you know, at some point I'll buy some product. Yeah, that would be nice. Support the channel, support. Uh, so that would be nice. Thank you very much for thinking about us. Let's see. I'll buy some product from you guys. Focus on expanding as fast as possible. Thank you very much. Yep. That would be great. I appreciate that. Um, all right. Oh, 
Uh, okay, so we got keypads, we got dispensers, we got oh the car the car rear. So now you're in the keypads. When's the keypad gonna fail? Usually keypads will last usually around five years. To be honest with you, um, the only thing that will change on there is does do they unplug the ATM every night? Do they reboot it? If it stays on, it's the battery is got about a five year um, life on it. So most of the time you got an ATM. It's been in the field for five years. If you look and it was bought brand new, you look at the manufacturer date. Hey, there you might if it's where are we at? You're at 2019. You know what? You might be thinking about I might need I might need a, a keypad pretty soon. Now, um, if you buy a spare keypad, I mean, right now, uh, if you're looking at an, an X1, you're probably looking at you know 550 to six 650 for an X1, um, depending on who you're buying it from. Uh, you could buy, maybe if you could find a used 8,000, um, you could probably get cheaper. Um, and then, uh, you got to keep it, you know, I would recommend you keep that plugged in. Um, I wouldn't keep it spare on shelf because the battery kind of dissipates if you're just leaving it on the shelf. So I wouldn't do that. Wouldn't buy a spare and keep it not plugged in. Uh, please keep that plugged in because that'll, it'll ensure the battery life. All right. Um, but you got to figure out for now. We re, if we do an advanced replacement, we it's not a advanced replacement. We do a, a swap. You send us your keypad for hundred. Um, well, no, it's for two hundred fifty dollars. We'll um, we'll send you over an, an X one or eight thousand R, depending on what you got. So you send us yours. You don't have to get it. You don't have to wait for it to repair, and we'll send it back to you. But that's about what um, it costs for either a Gen Mega or uh, now that's a B three, um, the B three to B five or the uh, 8000R or the X1. They used to have a 6000 keypad. Um, no, Shosung isn't repairing those anymore. So those going to be, uh, I don't know, boat anchors or frisbees or whatever you want to call it. So those aren't, once that thing craps out, it's it's all done. Um, all right. It's a wait. There's a battery in the keypad that requires an entire thing to be replaced. Yes, there's a battery in there. But if you open it up, then you void out the keypad and you're screwed. So when the keypad fails, that's usually what happens. On an X, on an 8000R, you can reset the keypad in case there's something else. If there's an X1, you can't, you got to send it into them. But on 8000R, you can reset those keypads. Um, that is with, if you have, if you've been in the game, you had 27 ATMs, those 6000 keypads, when they would go out from time to time, is because of the battery. The battery would go out. It loses firmware. The thing would crap out. You would have, you would have um, I forgot what the error was, but that's what that was what was happening. Say I keep it coming all the time. Lost longer five years. Yep, yep. Keep them keep them plugged in. All right, uh, all right. So then the other thing, let's see, we got um, explore ways to pay free. Let's see, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Let's see, learn how to run your business as well. Same kind. Okay. So the other thing that we do. Um, that saved a bunch of time. I would consider it making money because we didn't spend money doing this. Is we put everybody on AC. I talk about this a lot. Put everybody on ACHs and we put everybody on an automatic statement. So the first of the month, we email them and you can do it whenever you want. Um, some people choose to do it like around the third of the month, some do it on the first of the month. Um, but uh, email them over a statement that'll show them. Hey, your customers, this is what you can expect. And then somewhere between the third and the fifth of them or eighth of the month, they'll get they'll get their money. We did uh, we made this all automatic. We don't cut checks. Um, and I was surprised when I talked to ATM people in the field, I was surprised how many people cut checks. And I thought, why would you do that? But maybe it's because the processors are with, they don't offer this opportunity. And maybe maybe that's what it is. Maybe if you were with CDS, I know a lot of people with CDS, they cut checks. I know a lot of people with PAI, they, again, PAI is an ISO, but PAI, they cut checks. So maybe PAI, and I don't know this for sure, but maybe they don't give you the opportunity to, um, to ACH the money right in your account, or maybe they charge for that. I don't know. I think it's well worth it. It makes all sense. We don't charge for it. We do it, but, um, maybe, maybe it's, a uh, maybe that's why they don't do it. Or maybe the person that they were, uh, mm -hmm. that they were going through didn't allow them. I, I don't know what the reason is because it's to me, it's a nice, simple format. It's clean and cut. And it's something, man, that I hate. I used to hate the end of the month. Now I love it because I'm getting money. But at the end before I didn't, I didn't like it because I always cut checks. So 
All right. So that was some of the things that we did uh, to, to learn to keep, to save money and keep the customers happy. You'd be surprised how many, we took over an ATM route. Um, we took over an ATM route. Um, uh, one time, uh, uh, a guy, uh, a guy sold an ATM route to somebody else. And, and a, uh, a guy that I know said, Hey, Phil, you're right in the Chicagoland area. This guy bought this route, the little route, maybe about eight ATMs. Would you be interested in vault cash? I said, eh, Okay, you know what? Maybe I would. So he gave me the numbers. I'm like, okay, it, it makes sense. We can make some money. We're right there. Some of the locations were either in the next block or down the street. It wasn't a big deal. We couldn't do that. All right. So we do that. We mm -hmm. we 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 vault cash, which means we put our money in. The guy owned the ATMs. We put our money in and we did this. And so we're in a location for, I don't know, a couple months. And then my guy who was filling the ATM said, Hey, the store owner over here at, at let's call it XYZ location. Uh, said he isn't getting his money. And I said, well, we don't have anything to do with that. That's the, the owner. I called the owner and said, hey, this guy, yeah, yeah, I'm getting to it. Uh, you know, we, we we just took over the route. I'm like, okay, well, uh, you know, when do you think you can get that? He said, oh, in a couple of weeks. Okay. Well, he went a couple more months. They never paid the, the customer. It mm -hmm. happened in mm -hmm. every location. So I told him, I said, just put it on just put it on ACH. You will get the bank accounts for you. No, we don't do that. We, we cut checks. All right. So it, it went on like this for almost a year. And I said, I'm done. I said, it was November. I said, at the end of the year, in December, we're done with you. I said, my name is on a locate. My name is on a service sticker. My guy goes to, goes to location. I go we, anytime there's a service. I said, I don't need it. We're too hard to have a, a, another company like that. Since these guys out of their money, I'm out. And so that was it. We went to the end of the year. I said, good luck. And we pulled our money and that was it. But I was surprised at how many people still write checks. And maybe it's a way to scam uh, location. One thing I did learn, and this mm -hmm. one this one was a shocker, is I, uh, I a bar owner, I went to him and I said, hey, your ATM is out. He says, yeah, I know. This guy fills it. I said, well, I've been in here three times. It's always out. We used to play we used to play euchre and I used to play euchre. They had like a, a euchre tournament there um, at 12, at 12 o'clock, like once a month. And I would go there, we play euchre and it was always out. And I've talked to the owner. I said, look, what happened here? He said, well, the guy, the, this guy fills it. I said, well, kick him out. I said, this is how I do. Yeah, I know what you do, Phil. Here's the problem. He owes me for a whole year of search for the inner, for the revenue. I said, he hasn't paid a year. No. And if I kick him out, then he's going to, then he's not going to pay me. So I said, okay. So I said, well, when you get paid. So then what happened is the guy paid him, but only paid him six months. He always had a trailing six months. I guess that's a good way to keep the, the, the ATM in the location is only pay him six months and then they won't kick you out because they, they have, you still owe money. I don't know. It's a shady way of doing it. I don't do it, but that's what they did. All right. We got one more question. Let's see. I'll keep, let's see. I started in 21, everything bought new. Okay. Good job, man. Good job. All right, uh, and then we got one more last thing. Um, let me see. Um, let's see. Okay, keeping the ATM safe. So, what I recommend now, if you're, if you're, um, what I recommend is this, and this happens, and uh, it's really keeping ATMs, but your your money safe. So, what happens is this, uh, and this has happened to me. You have the ATM in the location. You go in, you bolt it down. It's very secure. And then all of a sudden, somebody will call and say, hey, Phil, you know what? Can you move your ATM? We're going to redo the floor. Okay. All right. So well, what do you want me to do? I just want you to take the ATM. Just put it over here. We're going to redo half the floor. And then uh, you can you can put it back. Well, guess what? When I move it on the other side of the store, I don't bolt it down. I just put it over there. So now they redo the, they redo the tile. I unbolt it. They put new tile down. I come back. And I moved the ATM. And then sometimes they say, oh, you know what? We're going to move this shelf. We're going to move this cooler. We're going to move this. We're going to move that. Can you put it over there? And the ATM has been unplugged, unbolted, not unplugged, still using, for a period of maybe a month. Well, that puts me in a vulnerable position. So am I safe? No. Am I trying to do a store owner something um, Nice. Yeah. Cause I don't want to drill holes in the floor. At the end of the day, I got five, six grand sitting there naked out there in the store. Said anybody can come in, wheel that puppy away. Um, that's not good business. I do it. I've done it. 
I don't want it. I don't do it anymore. So when they say that, I said, here's what, and here's what we can do. You want me to move it? No problem. I'll take it. I'll take it. We'll unplug it. I'm taking the money out of it. I'll move it wherever. Can you leave it? Nope. I can move it, but I'm going to bolt it down. You want me to bolt it down? No. Okay, fine. Your tile guy should just, he should just go over there. Why don't your tile guy just go over there, put the tile where you want it around the ATM and I'll bolt it right back down. Have the guy, I'll, I'll come in the morning. We'll bolt it, we'll unbolt it. We'll move it out. At the end of the day, I'll put the, I'll put the ATM back. Can we do it that way? Well, yeah, I want the ATM. Okay, fine. Then we'll do it that way. Don't fall subject. You're trying to be a nice guy. I've been a nice guy. It's unsafe. It's unhealthy for your business because, you know, lose five, six grand. It's not, it's not any fun. So, and I, I don't want, it makes me sick. So being a nice guy sometimes doesn't pay, especially in that situation. But I, I've seen that not only for myself, but I've seen it in other, other ATM businesses. They've done this. So, all right. So I just want to thank you guys very much tonight. Any more questions? I'm going to look through the comments. I don't see any. Uh, I don't see any because I don't see. I see. So um, I don't see any more questions. I don't know how to. Okay. Uh, have you ever had an ATM stolen? Yes, we have. I didn't like it. Um, I've had an ATM stolen, I don't know, a few times. Um, it's not. Uh, that's why we we started um, we started using uh, the DPL. DPL's got a a modem with a tracker in it, and a sh and if somebody shakes it, it'll go off. It's very expensive. The, the modem it costs a lot of money every month, you know. But on some of the some of the neighborhoods that we're in, it's a little bit more secure. I got enclosures that go around the ATM now that you have to put in about. Uh, six bolts. The whole thing is a case that goes around the ATM. So in certain neighborhoods, it's the best way to go. I try to put the ATMs not close to the door anymore. Um, we used to put them right when you walk in. Now we try to move them back in the middle of the store. So uh, avoid smash and grabs. Um, most of the places are very secure. They have alarms. Some have the roll down windows because of the summer love here in Chicago. Um, a lot of places, liquor stores, convenience stores, they got the roll downs. So, you know, they can't, they can't bust in, especially on some of the um, bad neighborhoods. We lost one during the summer of love uh, here in Chicago. They burned a whole, they burned a whole strip, strip mall down. So it was, um, you know, it was, a, it was a bad situation, but uh, uh, we got through it. And so, um, but those little things help out um, to get, um, we talked about those and I have one stolen a few years ago when I started. Yeah. It happens, you know, um, do I like it? But you got to do what you can to protect yourself. Again, DPL has a nice device. Um, there are other, uh, we have enclosure. They can help um, minimize anywhere you don't feel is, is very secure because of the neighborhood or the environment. Um, we had uh, the one, the last one that we had stolen. It was in a very, it was a tough neighborhood. I never really liked the location. What they had a steel door, it was about two inches thick. They the guys cut a hole through the roof and broke down through the roof and came in. That's how he got anything was bolted, but they had uh, I guess they had enough time, but it wasn't not uh, but you know what that that's what happened. Luckily, it was an old ATM and there and we there was hardly any money in it, so I got really lucky on that situation. All right. So now this is the time we go into our uh, accountability call for our students and our um, our uh, our um, ATM mastermind. I just want to let you guys know we sell ATMs, we process transactions. Thank you guys very much for joining tonight. If you got questions, comments, concern, you can always comment on the replay. Um, and any questions, I'm here to help. Anytime you guys want help. Um, so thank you guys very much for watching the channel. If you don't, if you haven't uh, subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so. We're probably about 15 away from 4,000, which is a big milestone. We've been on the YouTube for uh, almost four, uh, almost five years in 2019. So it'll be five years this, uh, I guess, this June. So I want you guys to thank you very much for um, watching the channel, subscribing. Thank you very much for jumping on the live. And uh, we'll see you guys at the next, in two weeks at six o'clock Central Standard Time. 
um, thank you guys very much. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.